everybody. Hi, no, how are you doing? doing Welcome good. to another Q&A video. Okay, let's go. First question from Bell Boots. Does Noga agree that him, Martin, George R.R. reveals some unusual repeating thoughts that are likely his own interests through his writing? Disem disem dismemberment, undervalued men that are considered unattractive for some reason, but they're actually pretty awesome. Maybe also sex between brothers and sisters. I believe that everyone who is a creator, or, you know, writer, whatever. Okay. I mean, everything we do is us, so everything we do, of course, reflects uh, our inner world in some way. Right. Even if it's somebody else. Even if it's... If it w it's not about us, it's somebody else, but yeah. from the way that we perceive it. Right. Okay. I mean, I, I try to look at it uh, as if he's describing his dream to us. Okay. So the whole world is a dream in a way. Okay. And like in the psychoanalytic mm. tradition, I mean, there are all kinds of ways to look at a dream. Okay. It's like the, all the characters symbolize parts of the self. And also, in, in a way, I believe that it's the whole dynamics of the, the world that is more indicative of his, uh, uh, of his inner world, the way right, he doggy sees dog. it. In a way, conflicts that uh, are unnecessary, you know, there's this kind of like understanding that the world is constantly conflictual, mm. but there's also the underlying question of what can we all just yeah. get along? Yeah. Yes. And it's fractured. It's fractured. It's a lot of uh, unnecessary loss. People and characters that are not dichotomously bad or good, but are very complex. Yes. And that's why, you know, we constantly have to deal with the limitations of ourselves and others. And what about the dismemberment? Of course, we can look at it as like the fear of castration, like in a uh, universal... Uh, let's look at it this way, I like it. Okay. <laughs> but uh, there's also, I mean, he says a lot about uh, castration. It's not only the fear of castration. It's about also, in a way, not uh, repudiating femininity, you know? Because, I mean, even if we look at the unsolid, uh, they're very masculine, even though they're dismembered. Right. I mean, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to do with the other. Okay. And some women are very phallic, you know, even though they're women. Okay, I like it. So, yeah, there's all the, I mean, it's, there's a lot of it, a lot of uh, melancholy, basically. Yes. In this world. Yes. Let's go to our dear patron, Doris. Hi, Doris. Do you think that Sansa will raise Daenerys and Jon's child or children once she becomes queen? So that's uh, assuming that they have a child, right? She's supposed to be, supposedly barren, but... If they care to put such an emphasis on the fact that she's barren, maybe she will not be barren if the right guy with the right sort of seed comes along that has a Targaryen Stark thing. Actually, I like it. I didn't think about it at all. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's a theory that's uh, out there. But them having a child and then Sansa raising that child? Why would she? I because mean, she will not have any children of her own. Sansa? Sansa. She will not have any children of her she, own. She's mm -hmm. supposed to be like Elizabeth, like the Virgin Queen and all that. I don't know. I like it. What do you think? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's go to Lost Goth again. Hi, Lost or Mr. Goth. This is one is for you. It's a good one. He wants to know any favorite part in the book that shows a certain psychoanalytical issue in the most accurate and beautiful way. It's difficult for me to say, of course, because I think that uh, once we got into the characters, I mean, we saw that uh, most of them have this kind of like coherent. Right. Um, it's incredible what it's it, incredible. the job that he did. Yeah, yeah. Right, once we get a hold of some, uh, whatever, psychoanalytical uh, method to analyze this, this character's issues, mm -hmm. just was across the board relevant. Yeah, it was like this kind of... Uh, discovery. Yeah, discovery, and oh, that matches, right. and this matches. Okay, and, uh, yeah, yeah, so that was beautiful. But okay, maybe just think of, try a few examples, maybe of the videos uh, that we shot. I really liked Ramsey's video because... Uh, there was this kind of twist to him. We can imagine Ramsey in the corner crying, and she's like, "Oh, shut up! You know, I don't want to, don't want to listen to you, don't want to see you." And you know, maybe Ramsey soiling himself as babies, of course, do. Then his mother comes into him, and like with a very angry and impatient face, is like telling him, "Oh my God, you reek!" You know, that's I mean. That's really a terrible thing to say to a baby, and that's what he saw. That's how he, he experiences himself as someone who reeks. I mean, the kind of twist that we talked about was, could also be seen as dangerous. I mean, just seeing like this crazy criminal and uh, 
and yeah. trying to empathize with right. him because this is uh, what we're supposed to do when, when we're psychoanalyzing him, right? right? Understand him. Understand him, not, uh, of course, agree with, with what right. he does. But, but just you did a very good job uh, making uh, him come to life. Yes, yes. <laughs> go on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to Deep Mind. Another question from Deep Mind. How, Mr. Hi, Mr. Mind. Okay, interesting loaded question, fellows. Do you think Israel, Israel state, will rule the world one day? And if so, how? How will Israel rule the world? This is so interesting to see the perception of Israel from the outside and from the inside. Like here we feel like we're on this tiny island. We have nowhere to go, nowhere to go. Just like you go 30 minutes from the coast, you go east, that's it, you have to go back. <laughs> But from the outside, uh, I don't know, it has uh, some kind of, kind of uh, flavor to it, this loaded question that uh, I think uh, is, I don't know, indicative of some cultural thinking about Jews uh, ruling the world, because this is not in any way based in reality. True, but maybe it's also indicative of the, the fact that... Um, not the, don't take it personally, Mr. Mind. Yeah, of course not, because it's also very confusing, I think, because there's a lot of uh, media coverage, and uh, Israel is also uh, said to have a nuclear... Uh, well, uh, like the rumors say... There are goys over there. <laughs> <laughs> you have to keep it in the family. <laughs> rumors say... Well, but okay, but yeah. do we have enough to... Of course not. It, ...to rule the world? <laughs> I mean, Israel is just 8 million people. I mean, I think that's less than uh, London, you know, so... Uh, yes, this is such a weird question. Okay, second part of the question. What's the difference between a Zionist and a simple Jew? Because an Zionist can never be a simple Jew. <laughs> no. Extraordinary Jew. I think it's a very valid question. And I right. think it, uh, there's a lot of uh, interest in it, like a lot of uh, wish to learn about it. Uh, so Zionism, basically Zionism. Basically Zionism is like the, uh, the nationalistic uh, movement that uh, started uh, at the end of the 19th uh, century. Right, with all the other nationalist movements in uh, right. Europe. It was born out of uh, like the uh, persecution of Jews in Europe. Right, headed by secular, right. liberal mm -hmm. uh, people. Also, some of them were feminist even right. a little bit. Right. It's the nationalistic part. It's not the religious part. No, not at all. But now it has become, over time, okay, so I'll say my piece. Zionism, I think, is just a buzzword. People use it as a weapon to whatever, beat people over the head with either you're an anti-Zionist or is a Zionist, or a Zionist, whatever. So I think this is just like a bullshit debate because Zionism means a hundred different things to a hundred different people. So if somebody asks me if I'm a Zionist and they just tell me what it is, if it's about ruling the whole uh, land of Israel, sacred land, then of course not, whatever, that's not my thing. If it's just like the Jews having a, a, a place to stay where they are and be safe, okay, that's fine. It doesn't have to be against any other peoples. We can be Zionist in that way and also coexist with our neighbors. So you have all this entire spectrum in between those, mm -hmm. those two options. Mm -hmm. But an anti-Zionist means this should not be Israel. Israel should not be a state in any way. Mm -hmm. like it has to be a binational state. So there's also a question of what it, what it means to be Jewish. Maybe right. that's also confusing. I mean, right. some people look at it only as a religion, mm -hmm. and some people look at it uh, as a race. You know, it doesn't matter whether ethnic, whatever, ethnic, uh, ethnicity, yeah, ethnicity, yeah, ethnicity whatever. or as a race, like the right. you know, a people. And, Sorry? No, but a race, it's not really a race because some are white and some are, and some are brown and some are black. Yeah, but like the Nazis uh, looked at it as a race. Ah, uh, yes, but I don't care about this. No, yeah, no, okay. So, can. Can. But it's still not a race. Can. It's a can. Oh, you're fucking Iran and I'm from Turkey. You're fucking Iran, but you're also fucking Iran. You're fucking Iran. You're fucking Iran. כן, אבל עדיין יש לך יותר במשותף עם אחמדינג'אד מאשר עם מדבל. זה לא אותו. בטוח. מה אני מדבר על פאקינג איראן? אני מחבב אותו יותר. אההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההה
Ding, ding, ding.